Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In the previous tutorial, we learned how to create the project structure for any kind of Java application using Maven. And at the same time, while we were learning so, I also explained all important and fundamental concepts of it, like what's a Maven repository, what are Maven plugins, what's the concept of an archetype, group ID, artifact ID, version, etc, etc. So overall what we learned was, in order to create the project structure for any kind of Java application, you just need to run a Maven command with the name MVN Archetype Generate. And once you run that, it's going to display a huge list of archetypes before you. You are required to choose one archetype from that big list. And in addition to that, you are also required to provide values for group ID, artifact ID, version and package properties. And once you provide all that, Maven is going to create the project structure for that application automatically. And what we did in the previous tutorial, just to keep all things simple, I chose an archetype which would create the project structure for a simple non-web Java application. And later, after providing values for group ID, artifact ID, version and package properties, Maven has created this project structure for me automatically. Until this point, everything we saw in detail in the previous tutorial. Now let's proceed further and understand what exactly it has here done for us. Because when Maven creates the project structure for any kind of Java application, what basically it does is it creates all required directories for that application. It first creates the root directory of the project and gives it a name as that of the artifact ID value which you would provide while running the ambient architect generate command. And inside this root directory, it includes a folder with the name src. And under this folder, it further includes two folders with the name main and test. And under both these folders, it further includes a folder with the name java. And under both these java folders, it further includes all package related directories as for the package property value which you would provide while running the ambient archetype generate command. Guys, it also includes a sample Java source file under this Java folder and a sample JUnit test class under this Java folder. And in addition to all that, it also includes a file with the name pom.xml file in parallel to src folder. Now, what's this file? What purpose it serves to us? We're going to look at in just a couple of seconds. Guys, whatever project structure I just described to you, which Maven creates for us, Maven has created exactly the same thing for me over here. It has created this root directory and under that it has uh, included one src folder and a pom.xml file. Under this it has created two folders, main and test. Main has a Java folder which has all package related directories and a sample Java source file. Test folder has a Java folder which has all package related directories and a sample JUnit test class. Guys, now that Maven has created this whole project structure for me, the only task which is pending here is to write the actual code for this application. And for writing the actual Java code for this application, Maven has given some guidelines or conventions. It says, Whatever Java source files anyone would write for this application, all those should be included under this Java folder, which is under this main directory. And whatever test classes anyone would write for this project, all those should be included under this Java folder, which is under this test directory. Now, the important point to note over here is these conventions are not mandatory to follow, but if we follow these conventions, then we would get a real good benefit while we would perform some tasks for this project like code compilation, code packaging, etc, etc. So what I'll do, while performing all those tasks for this project, I will explain all the advantages which we would get if we follow these conventions. Alright, now let's understand what's this bomb.xml file. 
because this file holds all the basic information about this project which Maven would use while performing all kind of tasks for this project like code compilation, code packaging, dependency management, etc, etc. So what I'll do, I'll explain all these statements in a very brief manner to you and later I'll explain their practical importance while performing all those tasks for this project. All right. Now let's understand all these statements one by one. On top of this file, you would find group ID, artifact ID and version tags. So what Maven has done, whatever values we provided here for group ID, artifact ID and version properties, Maven has simply copied all that and pasted here. So there's nothing special about it. Whatever we provided here while running the Maven architect generate command, it has simply copied all that here. Now, what's this packaging tag? Because every project has some sort of outcome or output. If it's a web-based Java application, then its outcome or output would be a var file. If it's a non-web Java-based application, then its outcome would be a jar file. Because here we chose an archetype which created the project structure for a simple non-web Java application. So by putting this statement here in this mom.xml file, Maven is saying that the outcome for this project would be a jar file. Now what's this name tag? Because this tag specifies the name of this project and in general Maven keeps its value as that of the artifact ID value which uh, we provided as a part of running Maven architect generate command. But if you want, you can always change this value over here to give some better name to your project. For the time being, we can ignore these tags. Now, what's this dependencies tag and what's this dependency tag inside it and all this information which is contained in it? Because you remember, in the introduction to Maven video, I was talking about one of the most wonderful features of Maven and that was whatever dependencies your project might have, all those dependencies would be managed by Maven automatically for you and you are not required to do any single task for that manually. Let me explain what I'm really talking about here. In this project structure, Maven has included a sample JUnit test class over here. So this class would require all JUnit related jars to be present on this computer before we would perform compilation tasks for this project. So this project has a dependency on JUnit related jars. Now, what we would do normally to get all those jars, if we are not using a tool like Maven, we would go to the internet, we would search for all JUnit jars, we would download all of them on this computer, and if by any chance any of those jars further depends on any other jar or jars, we would again go to the internet, we would search for all those jars, we would download all of them, and after including all those downloaded jars in this project, we would be able to perform compilation task. Now, if we are using Maven, we are actually free from all those tedious tasks. In order to get all JUnit related jars, we just need to add this dependency tag in this pom.xml file. Now, Maven has included this dependency tag over here by default because this project has a dependency on all JUnit related jars. So this is how it works. When we would run a Maven command to perform compilation tasks for this project, at that moment, before executing that command, Maven is going to search for all jars with this version for JUnit on this computer. And if it doesn't find all those jars on this computer, then it would go to the internet and would download all required jars with this version from something called as Maven repository. So it's only after downloading all those jars on this computer related to JUnit which have this version, Maven is going to run that command to perform compilation task. And the important point to note over here is, when it would download all JUnit jars from Maven repository, it would also download all JUnit dependencies as well on this computer. So this is the only information which we would need to provide to Maven to fetch all JUnit related jars on this computer to perform the compilation task for this project.
right in the next tutorial i'll show you how this overall concept works practically and along with that we'll see how to compile and package you know this project there's a big thank you for learning maven with me if you have any feedback or comments please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email id for all of your queries please hit the like button if you really like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel gone to series and i'm gonna catch you in the next part of this tutorial